There is a podcast no one asked for. A podcast you never knew you didn't want. Three beers in. This is the podcast. I anticipate a deeply religious experience. Listener, you're listening to Three Beers In. Ross here, and with me tonight is Clint. Hello. Joel. And Cutter. Hey, listener. Tonight, we're going to be drinking Celis White, a Belgian-style wit beer from Celis Brewery. Gentlemen, to your cans. Ooh, I got a full nose there. Smells like beer. Yes, it does smell like beer. It's like very beery. Oh, yeah. That's a white wheat right there. That is. Oh, man. Coriander. Yeah. A little coriander action. Is that is that what I'm tasting there? No, no. You know what that is. Cloven bananas. No, no. It's the orange. It's the orange uh, notes. <laughs> Some cloven bananas. <laughs> You're going a different way with that. My first taste is really good. I wasn't too sure of the coriander. I'm not. I'm not sure if I've had a beer with coriander in it. Or at had, least not uh, one that says coriander on the label. Does it say coriander on there? Yeah, it says orange peel and coriander. Ah, most of your, and most and, your and it's got do. a picture of it, I guess. But yeah, and I was reading that it had a sour element to it because of the yeast that they use. But it just tastes like a straight wit beer. And it is delightful. Just delightful. I think I can pick up a little bit of the sour, but I'm not picking up much. Yeah, I, I can sort of taste it buried in there a little bit. But mostly I, I just get the wheat. So for, for my comparison, the only thing I, I know that's another white wheat like this and fairly popular is Avery White Rascal. I actually, I think this is better. This suits me much better than Avery. Well, it has this won is, numerous awards. This is, uh, it's, it's very smooth. A lot of the beers from Avery Brewery can get a little rascally, a little alcoholy. Like this is very smooth. A little, yeah, a yeah. little tough gotcha. to drink. Gotcha. A little rough, rough on the old buds, taste buds. Joel, what you thinking over there? So I got a couple ideas. Uh oh. Oh. One, I don't, it kind of tastes just like your Main Street beer, Budweiser, Miller Lite. Ooh. Almost, I feel like that mm, taste disagree. to it. Ooh. It's it's kind of it's not strong. I I understand so what you're saying. It tastes a little uh, watered down. But I would say if I had a son, this would be <laughs> the first beer I'd probably give him. I think it's a good. <laughs> If you've never had beer before, this is probably a great starter. Yeah. yeah <laughs> my my daughter's going to get an Imperial Stout to start off. Because this is what all beer tastes like. <laughs> so so if you let no, – wait, it could backfire and she likes it. But then I will have a beer partner for oh, that. okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So coriander. Uh, uh, isn't that cilantro? Mm-hmm. It's just another the word seed. for – The seed. Oh, okay. Oh, it's the seed of cilantro? Okay. Because I, I, right. I – I, I just I always thought correct. they were interchangeable. No, it's not because uh, cilantro is actually like the leafy yeah, part. Yeah, that like makes sense. Coriander, you're, I believe, is the seed. That you're, that's why it doesn't taste. You're uh, making time's that past. up. No, I don't like look salsa. At, well, okay. There's coriander. <laughs> coriander, mom. Um, <laughs> I don't taste that. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't taste it at all. I was, you don't taste it at all. Well, I don't know. No, I don't taste cilantro. No, is what I, I taste, don't taste. I taste the. I taste orange peel and raisins. <laughs> I got a lot Nature's of wheat. fruit. I got a lot of wheat and and the orange. I got a little orange. The coriander kind of has a lingering effect on the back of the tongue. Is where I usually get it. This is where I've been getting it on this beer. Always on the back. I of I got the a tongue. little bit on the front. You I don't know if that's the sour or. I think that's just now. I just. Uh, I, think, I think that's Corey. I was trying to taste it instead of just drink it. I don't know. <laughs> just shot. Don't it. don't <laughs> get all fancy on us, Ross. Trying to enjoy it. We're just chugging. Well, yeah, instead of just enjoying it, tasting it. I don't know. That's too technical for this podcast. Yeah. So what do we know about Cellar? Basically, this guy, Pierre, he, he brewed this beer in 1965 utilizing a Belgian <laughs> yeast. And the beer itself is actually really, really old, reminiscence from like medieval times. Mm-hmm. It's called the legendary father of wit beer. 
brewed by Pierre Sellis in 1965. It's a signature wit beer is made with the original Sellis recipe, including Cascade, Saws, and Willamette hops, coriander, and orange peel, as as well as the proprietary yeast strain from Belgium. I don't want to offend our Oregon uh, people, but it's Willamette. Willamette hops. Willamette? Mm-hmm. They grow a lot of Pinot Noir there. Oh, they grow a lot of hops there because yeah. it's a perfect condition for hops. Yeah, and a, a valley with a lot of breweries. Mm-hmm. Willamette. Willamette hops. The way I always remember it, it's Willamette, damn it. That's so lame. That's what they <laughs> yeah. say. That's what, that's what they say. That's what, what, what people from Willamette say from what I've understood. Yeah. Well, Never. then people from Willamette are so lame. <laughs> Just lost so, the state. It just, I mean, it, it just, it just, we must, got no listeners there anyway. It just must suck to not be from Texas. Oh, uh, yeah. Know what I'm saying. I don't know what it's like. Yeah. Cutter, how much does it suck? Uh, uh, I'm from here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sort of. Born and living here currently. Was, Born and living here raised. currently. I was not raised here. Well, exactly. So, how, how was it being raised in a non Texas state? Uh, I'm definitely lacking in my Texas history knowledge. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we already knew that. So Pierre Sellis is actually credited with reviving the wit beer. Yeah. Wit beers are dis- are descended from medieval beers, like Clint was saying earlier, that were flavored and preserved with a blend of spices and other plants like coriander, orange, and bitter orange instead of hops. Like those medieval beers... Celis White is flavored with coriander and orange peel. But- Point of clarity on that. So they're saying the medieval beers didn't actually have any hops in them. It was just like coriander, this, orange this, peel. The style that these are descended from. Yeah. Not all. I don't think not all uh, medieval beers because I'm pretty sure they well, still had sorry, they had yeah, hops. The, the, right but the, so how is it? a? It wasn't really a beer then. It was some other kind of yeah, drink, was, would you say? It was just. No, because all you need, whatever you don't, you don't technically. You need don't need hops. hops. Hops just provides that flavor and a little antibacterial sort of. So would it have been like it keeps it, let wheat, it keep longer? Coriander, and yeah, some orange sort peel. of some sort of grain, and then fruits and spices. So it would be more like a, just like alcohol and not like beer hmm. per se. Probably something close to mead at that point, right? Probably. It's like yeah, they probably use meads. Well, honey, it's honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. I, no, I know meads honey based, but it'd be like beer ish, beer ish. Yes. Beer ish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd say that's a that's a good uh, good way to to say. So, but the Celis White does have hops in it. So, wit beer or beer blanche or just plain old white beer gets its name due to the suspended yeast and wheat proteins which cause the beer to look hazy or white, especially when cold. Typically uh, unfiltered. That's what it is. Yes, that's yes. usually also, that hazy. Right. Oh, and as a follow-up to our uh, previous two episodes, that were that was one night cut in half, mm-hmm. Ross is actually intending to turn this into a Rattler some point this evening. Is anybody else, like, get a, uh, like, it, is this kind of tingly on the tongue? For anybody else? Li- yes. I, there's a little bit of it. I'm pretty sure that's a sour. That's the the lambic that that results from the the, er, the lactic yeah, yeah. acid. The uh, yeah acidity that's well, supposed to be in it. It's also made of the orange, right? Well, yeah. So you have the orange peel, right? So I guess you maybe, maybe acidity from the orange. There's like, but there's like yes, the carb- no. A, it said there's like lactic acid and some other form of acid, like in the beer itself. Uh, acetic acid, maybe. Another interesting thing I recall reading is that. This continues to ferment when they yes, bottle it. which in the bottle, I'm sure that's fine. But now that they've started canning it, I wonder what they're doing. If it affects I mean, it or if they change the recipe for the cans. Usually or, they have to change the recipe slightly or, right. or something about it to go from bottle to can. Right. Like because is, they've uh, only recently started canning. Right. Usually when people go from bottles to cans, there's some issues. Mm-hmm. I haven't noticed any. They've only, I mean, it's only been out for what, two weeks in, right. a, in a can. Yeah. And the interesting thing, you were having a Professor Black the other day. I was. Which I read a while ago that Blue Owl, they had to actually change their recipe because it was fermenting again in the can. Yeah. And that could cause a dangerous situation. You would have a bunch of cans just 
Ready you to just blow. have bombs on the shelf. Yeah, dude. Gotcha. Those things, they when they go off, they it's just, uh, they, they usually it's just the pop that usually pops off. Yeah, it's all like so it's not that big of a deal. Like usually the tops covered on most mm. of the newer ones. They yeah, have that that's right. Plastic covering. That's right. We had the singles aisle. I was like f- across the store one time and it, boom. Cutter, what are you doing on the singles aisle? Mind your own business, Clint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's our sponsor tonight? Oh, we don't have sponsors. We don't have sponsors. So our website has an entire page that yeah. says <laughs> yeah. sponsors. Well, no, if, if, you, if you look closely, I was very careful not to use the word sponsor anywhere. Uh, it, I thought the, it says, the header I thought it says, of it says yeah. sponsor. <laughs> sponsor. That's a typo. <laughs> One day we hope they will, but eh, they don't pay us yet. If they want to. So as we mentioned... <laughs> So as we mentioned, Celis White is a wheat beer. There are two common types of wheat beer. There's the Weiss beer, the German style, based on the tradition of using at least 50% wheat to barley malt to make a light color top fermenting beer. Which, as we know, (laughs) if it's a top fermenting beer, then it's an ale. It's true. There you go. Because top fermenting beers require heat or they don't. It's not that they require heat, but cold will cause them to not ferment. Right. And the second is the wit beer made in the Belgian style where they use flavorings, typically coriander and orange peel. Belgian wheats are generally made with raw wheat, unlike other varieties that use malted wheat. And I'm sure Cutter is delighted to know that we are drinking a Belgian because apparently that is right up Satan's alley. It is right Satan. up Satan's alley. Oh, you'll you'll cut it in. <laughs> I, I did it last time. Yeah, yeah. Is that the single aisle? That is <laughs> that is the singles aisle. So, how does a Hefeweizen categorize, or is it completely Hefe- Hefeweizen is to, is a wheat as well? It's, it's a, a wheat, wheat beer. But it's not a white. It is a wheat, but so it's, you have, it's you not. So you have wheat Weiss. and means wheat mm-hmm. in German. Like a yeah. Weizenbach is a wheat bach. Yeah. Right. Of course. But uh, yeah, Weiss and wit are white, white. Weiss is white. Well, the thing is, what I was also reading, uh, which I didn't put into my notes because I didn't think it would ever come up. <laughs> <laughs> Weiss uh, means white, but in Germanic languages, white is typically the derivation or just it also means wheat yes. wheat and white are basically interchangeable so berry weiss is berry wheat yeah which gotcha. still makes me right yeah <laughs> fair enough wait, I, wait wait I, I don't know about that i don't know if we can live <laughs> no, 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 no. in a, in no. a let's, roundabout let's, way let's not, hey, like, you guys guys spend some time just think about that for a second no no I'm not wrong. Oh, no. I The whole world is just, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Episode mm. nine, everything collapses. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read the can? It says, the time is always right for a Celis White. Yeah, I'd say I'd say that's pretty, I could drink so you've heard it pretty here. much any time. Man, I'm going to bing it when I get home. So Tony isn't here. Tony rolled his podcasting ankle. Yeah, <laughs> apparently he, he injured his podcasting ankle, so he's not able to be here. And I heard that Chance went to see him in the hospital, but there was a mix-up, and he was tired, and he was sleeping in Tony's bed. And so they took him into surgery, and they were supposed to do a circular incision, but it turned out they did a circumcision. So, yeah, he's... He's gonna be, he's gonna be okay, but it's gonna take a while to trust anybody. As long as he stays off of it, say, is it, is and, it what's his and recovery drinks plenty time? of fluid. What's his recovery time? About four skin weeks. I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Joel is jumping the gun right now uh, and pouring himself a uh, Rattler. He started with the lemonade. God, that lemonade smells good though. Lala's. Mm. Yeah, that lemonade. It's good. very uh, sweet. Wouldn't this oh, be the man, right glass? It smells delicious in this glass, though. Does the orange peel really come through on in the glass? Well, the thing is, Belgian beers are more of an experience. So you know, you know, like the whole smell and everything. You really got to pour them into a glass to properly enjoy them. The thing is, the Bavarian style wheat beer is usually served in a 500 milliliter vase shaped glass, but the Belgian wit beer is generally served in 250 milliliter glass. And each brewery has their own shape, so I guess That's they, I guess true. they, uh, whatever notes they're trying to get 
they use the glass to kind of they accentuate do it in that. Damn cells. They, they yeah get their to own glass to accentuate their the notes in their beers that they want to accentuate. Gotcha. And to market better. <laughs> that too. It's like a trademark, like what I've been trying to do with our our brand. It's branding. Patent More pending. branding. Patent pending. 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 Actually, since we're talking about classes, um. So there was an article that was that came out this week that said um, Belgian, so Belgian bars are having an issue with they come out with custom glasses all the time, right? Mm-hmm. And people keep stealing their glassware. Oh well, yeah. And so can... uh, they're coming up with innovative ways of trading to make sure that they don't get stolen. So there's a bar that's actually trading for your shoe. So when you go in, you actually have to <laughs> give them your what? shoe. Oh man, <laughs> you have to give them a shoe in order to get a glass, and then obviously bring in some flip flops. Yeah. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah. Six yeah, dollar flip flops. <laughs> take, take my crappy flip flops. A dollar flip flop from Old Navy. There you go. You know what they're gonna start doing after that? Then what? Sprinkling the sidewalk with glass outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'll that'll work. Just you like real they cool. do outside the Bradley Bar. Yeah, that's that is what we do outside the Bradley Bar. If I have to take your Keep shoes, kids away. <laughs> kids, squirrels. You know, I've all lost the too things. many glasses. <laughs> That could be a cool thing if you were a homeowner. It could be like, oh, yeah, I want you to take man. your shoes off. So in order to get a glass, you got to take your shoes off in exchange for it. And yeah. Why are you inviting people <laughs> who actually steal your glasses <laughs> yeah. to your house, man? <laughs> That's, you need different friends. Yeah. Well, they talked about that. So uh, one of the things is, is that some of these bars, they'll actually have like custom glasses for pretty much every bar they serve. Mm-hmm. So one of the bars that they, t- they talked to said they had like something like 200 different types of glasses. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The bars so are specialized each different yeah, beer. For, yeah. for, for ones yeah. that specialize in, in Belgian beer, like it's, it's easy to get stupid, like out of the way. Like I'm yeah. overdone with glasses. I'm really uh, digging the uh, layer of lemonade at the bottom of Joel's glass right now. Did you drink it? Yeah. Because it tastes really, it, Joel, it tastes Joel's, a lot like lemonade, but yeah, it's good. Joel, Joel's is going to get, you're gonna, it's going to taste a lot more like lemonade in just a little bit. The, I promise yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crazy yeah. thing is, I didn't even pour half the can in there. But seriously, I did ask my manager today, like completely just randomly about the fifth element today. Totally agreed with me. Like, oh I, my gosh. I, I, I'm, I'm done. I you watched really, it last I, night I, while the, the I was editing. I, the, only, the only prompt I gave him was, would you say that fifth element is a good movie? <laughs> Or a great movie. Yeah. And then you, and he, while no, you were no, winking at him. No, because he went, uh, I would say that it's a terrible movie that I really enjoy watching. I would never say terrible. How could you there's, say it's a terrible movie? Because it's a pretty bad. There's no, very it's few, not bad. There's very few Luke Besson movies that I would say are terrible. But as I did discuss in the, I'm a fan of Luke Besson. Ever since I saw The Professional in eighth grade. You watched that movie in eighth grade? Yeah, it was on TV. I we had the, we had cable at the time. I read the movie's really. It was good, like the one. T- have you never seen The Professional? No. Oh god. Isn't it gory? Thanks, or, no. Or, Thanks, Joel. Or, 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 no, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say it's gory. He is a hitman. Yeah. But it's not gory. He's also raising a, a, a small child. Well, not yeah. really raising, but Natalie Portman is tagging along with him. Gotcha. But the final scene. Oh, by the way, real quick, real was, quick, dibs. Okay. okay. Uh, why, why would? Why did you have to interrupt me on or, on a preteen? Uh, she's not here. Yeah, no, but right. dibs. Are you talking about, about a dibs? Preteen Natalie? Was well, she preteen then? Probably. She was. She was. <laughs> dibs on, dibs like on current thir- generation. Actually, I think she was just a teen. She might have been thirteen at that time. Yeah. Have you guys seen Annihilation? It's a new movie that she's in. Oh no! Oh, no, 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 I have no, not no, seen no. it. I, I, looks interesting. I was like Mortal Kombat. It looks. It looks. <laughs> <Mom. laughs> Finish her. Now that's that's a bad movie. That, yeah. that is a bad yeah. movie. First Mortal Kombat, once again. See? Enjoyable to watch, terrible movie. What? It was With starring Christopher Lambert? Yeah. There can only be one. Yes, just like the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> so Mortal Kombat, sure. Bad movie. Fifth Element? Not, Not a, bad a bad movie. movie. No, it, it's a terrible. good. It's a good movie. I wouldn't say it's my favorite movie. It's not my it is, favorite Luke Besson movie, but it's, has, it's it, in the top. It's in the top. There. Is it a sci-fi classic yet? I don't know about classic, but it is definitely you know it's like a, sci-fi a, 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 a good sci-fi movie. Let me let me ask you this: Would you rather watch Alien. Fifth Element or Blade Runner? Ooh, Blade Runner. Fifth Blade Element. Blade Runner Final Cut. Fifth Element. For Although me. I mean. It does. Find out next week when Joel watches both. And then <laughs> I mean, fifth, fifth Element can be a lot more exciting. Oh, 
Oh man, that's a t- that's a tough call now that I'm thinking about it because I was I like Blade Runner for the aesthetic and the the world it takes it just takes you to a different world. But I mean, no, what literally takes you to a different element, world? Is fifth, fifth Element takes yeah. place mostly on a different world. No, well, Fifth Element is still on Earth. No, it never actually it occurs. Oh, that's right. They world. they go to. Uh, no, they never actually make it to that world. No, They're uh, just on a cruise yeah. ship. But I, I mean, I'm not seeing Blade Runner, but knowing the aesthetics of it, I feel like Blade Runners introduce a lot more of this. Uh, is it Narwar? Whatever. Narwar. Noir. Yeah, yeah, it is. Style, it is very sci-fi. If you watch- that's the thing that it does well. It's got the really noir yeah. sort of feel to it, and that can be, I don't know, boring at times or like really heavy. So if you don't want something really heavy. And if you just want something fun and exciting, Fifth Element is the way to go. Hmm. Yeah, because you see a lot of that if you watch any recent sci-fi. They, oh, yeah. There's a lot of elements from those Yeah, movies. ever since Ridley Scott really got big, yeah, people have been trying to copy that, really. Except James Cameron. James Cameron just said, fuck that. Yeah, he did. And what he, you, he made an action movie. Yeah. What? What? Aliens. Uh, yeah. Yes. Because uh, Ridley Scott did Alien, and then James Cameron did Aliens. Yeah. Which is totally not the same. Not the same. No, it's still it's still good. They're just totally different, different movies. Yeah. What about the last Alien movie? <sighs> Which oh, I, I watched that probably a week ago again. Resurrection? No. no. Ooh. Ooh, no. that's awful. No, it's, it had a French director. The Covenant. Is that what it's called? Covenant. Covenant? Alien oh, Covenant, Covenant, which okay. was the sequel to Prometheus. Oh, some would and say the prequel to Alien. Some would Ooh. some would say that it was the last Alien movie. <laughs> this is a fact. Uh, I, I think it made money. Uh, I think well, no, they're still going to make some. No, money. I just meant that you know, Clint was wrong. Uh, <laughs> all right. So here's a Whoa. question Did you like Covenant or Prometheus better? Prometheus. You lo- oh, I'm not a- even a thought. Prometheus. I, I, I've not seen Covenant. I just. I thought Prometheus was pretty bad, just from a from a scientific standpoint. Just wait, so but you hadn't you haven't seen it. I have not seen Covenant. Oh, okay. I've seen Prometheus. Well, here's okay. that, again. It to me for me, Prometheus has this world and everything, the aesthetic, and yeah. I just expected more from Covenant. Maybe I expected Prometheus, but better. Mm. My problem, and it didn't really deliver. Well, I, yeah. Ridley Scott really hasn't been what he Ridley was. Ridley Scott, right. yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's not really. He's kind of pushing George, the boundaries. George Lucas like, did, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know I, what I'm he, saying. He, he see, it seems kind of like he's coasting. Doesn't yeah. it feel like there's a formula to these last? Oh two? yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That, that's where I, I got off. I was like, I don't. I liked. I feel like Prometheus. I could watch over and over again. I, but I liked well, the newer uh, one. If more. you have but, uh, TBS, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, I think it's FX that's always showing. Wait, is that oh, Prometheus? Is that but, uh, Fox without the O? <laughs> or FXX? The extra the extra special? X is exotic. Mm. So well into the second beer here. How are we feeling about this? I'm, I'm still I'm still regretting good. putting lemonade in this. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I, I love it as a Radler. But then again, I like Radlers and Shandies. Ooh, question. Do you like last week's Radler better or this? Ooh, it's probably better this week. You think so? I Might I try it? Mm. Yeah. Might I try it? It's lighter. It you is. get more of the lemon. More the citrus. This is the mimosa. Where I mean, I guess. Sorry, I, I, I'm going to also have to try. Okay. So it's it's mainly just lemonade, I guess. You don't yeah. really taste the beer. You're much. right. Last week, yeah. I top it off. I mean, that's it. Kind of it kind of drowns out the beer. That is true. Last I week, did, I tasted the beer a lot. I, yeah, I think I prefer the the heft from wrench, and this is a little too light. Yeah, I can see that that being a problem. I like the uh, I like the Hef mixed better personally, but it's a different style, so it's mm-hmm. a little bit different just That's in true. general. I Very feel- smooth, respectable, but I would make oh, a shandy yeah. out of this. I feel like last week's would be better for if you're like not doing anything too active, you're just hanging out at the house barbecuing. But this would be better if you're like tubing or doing something more active. Yeah, where you don't want something as heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Which is interesting because not slapping the bag. Yeah. You could like probably stay out of my shower, Ross. <laughs> you could probably mix this into a camel bag and like oh yeah, sip on it all day. Yeah, the whole the whole trip. But the the beer itself, yeah, it's still really light and easy to drink. And oh yeah, yeah. I know. I think technically we 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 misused the term light and heavy 
when we're talking about it because we're talking about it in more of a how do you feel when you drink it when mm-hmm. apparently the actual term heavy is supposed to indicate the alcohol gravity or, exactly oh is it alcohol yeah, content means, yeah so like when you're talking about a heavy beer you're well, talking about like a high, high alcohol yeah, content high, beer well, high alcohol content beers t- tend to feel heavier no always not always case. not always the case but anyway for us on Tend. this podcast, when we say light and heavy, I just want to kind of make the distinction. Yeah. Uh, when we're saying light and heavy, we mean it in a more culinary sense of as you drink it, how does it make you like feel? Do you feel yeah, you, full it, and bloated right. or do, do you feel like you can, you still have room for more? I still think this is better than uh, every white, uh, rascal? white rascal for me. Yeah. Well, wait. Wait, what? Here's when did we here. have that on the podcast? We have not because it's not a we, local. Beer. Uh, we have not had that because it's not local. But for keep your for Colorado a, beers in Colorado hey, for a broader audience. So I kind of made a Rattler out of this, but interesting. Crystal Weizen and American wheat beers are sometimes served with a slice of lemon or an orange in the glass. But this is in no way a tradition in Bavaria and, and is often generally frowned upon. So the American custom of fruiting the beer is thought to have originated in Portland, Oregon. Oh, I'm in never the doing it. In 80s. I am never doing it again. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you know what makes that statement even it's like you know, what's gonna really get Portland off is like that they started something. Yeah. They literally yeah. started something. Oh, I'm never doing it again. <laughs> yeah, all hey, those uh Hey shout out to Portland. Mesopotamian land whales. Hey, or- hey, Portland. <laughs> Portland, are you are you listening? Are you listening? Okay, good, good. Fuck you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Portland. So, <laughs> so yeah, in Portland, there was a local bar that served a local Weizen beer with a slice of lemon to accentuate the citrus flavor of the Cascade hop. No, no. Hold on. Real, real important, real important for this whole conversation. Who did it first? Did Texans put lime in Mexican beer first? That's, that's what I was Portland wondering. Or did Portland people put... Orange or lemon and it was the 80s, wheat beers. Mid 80s. So when, when did people start doing. I'm going to blame Portland. Yeah. Uh, I would think they so have we, access to oranges. We copied Wait. Portland oh. with the lime and well, the Mexican beer. I don't know. Or is that something that came from Mexico? Or when, uh, when we started liming Coronas? Because that's. One of the few that you actually do, right? Any Mexican style beer, but Corona's yeah, the one Corona that's all, really for pretty it. much always has a. Has or you a put a yeah, I put a lime in Dos Equis. Put a lime. Put the lime in the, in the coconut. coconut. And you throw the rest away. So let's talk about the brewery. You know, Celis is known as Austin's first craft brewery. Yes. Yeah, I heard that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, it started during the craft beer craze of 1992. Well, I thought they uh, thought they'd been around since 1965. No, that's when he first brewed the Celis White, but he brewed that in his hometown of Ho Garden. I've never heard of it. Well, I I would like to visit that garden. Well, I'm a Ho Garden. <laughs> Probably Any- put you to work. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, but no, it's like it's a it's the name of a, a, another pretty popular wit beer. No, oh, I would imagine. I'm sure. His was not the only brewery. But no, like, he was not the only the, one brewing. The beer is called Hogard. Right. So. No, I understand. So it's probably from Hogard. Belgium. Oh, yeah. Or <laughs> inspired huh? at least. Yeah, Belgium. So the Cellus White was so popular and led to such rapid growth that Miller sought out and bought a controlling interest in the brewery and the Cellus name. But by 2000, Miller decided that instead of buying up good breweries, and Ryan Johnson and them, they <laughs> they would sell off their ownership and focus on their core beers. So Ross, would you say they pulled out of the Hoe Garden? <laughs> they did. They were never in the Hoe Garden. Oh, but, come on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, Joel, I would say that. And so on December thirty first, two thousand, Celis closed its doors and the taps went dry. That is until Christine Celis daughter of Pierre Celis, reopened the brewery in Austin's brewery district and revived her father's legacy as her father revived and championed the wit beer in his hometown of Hogarth in Belgium. Champion. Champion! So it is right down the street from Adelbert's. It's two blocks away. No joke, I, I corrected somebody who was looking for Adelbert's today. <laughs> there you go. It's Adelbert's, actually. 
I hear that's on in the brewery district. Is that correct? The yes. New is it Newfound Austin Brewery District or I don't think uh, it's Newfound. It, well, I mean, it's becoming known as the brewery district since our seventh podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is, that, is that not what it's really known as? Is this just what we're calling? I've read it in a few places uh, for a few different breweries. Did you read it from Bing? No, I am an adult. <laughs> I don't Bing things. Yeah, okay. Yes. I was like, I'm trying to figure out where the hell you guys are talking about. Basically, all, if you take a, saying, across hey, you, from the JJ Pickle <laughs> Research Lab. Yes, if you take a look, where they research yes. pickles. That's you, what I assume they do. If you take it uh, right through that Jack in the Box, there's. Four breweries that I saw with just signs out saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, we're a brewery." There's Austin Beer Works. There's hey, we're a brewery. They all <laughs> yeah. have the same sign up. So, well, hey, I mean, a they all just look like warehouses. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it's cheap and it's an open space, so it's, they can just open. That's true. I think what it was is there. And it's, it's, a, it's zoned for it. Right well, there, I mean, maybe, even I even uh, even Wrench when I went out to go pick up the La Las, it's the yeah. I picked up out there. So I went out to go pick up the, the La Las at uh, at Wrench the other day. It's it's basically in a warehouse essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have a lot of space there. Like if a, we went there uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Would there be? Oh, why would you go tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, because they're having a St. Patty's Day. And we thought it would be better than than going downtown to drive out to Georgetown to hit up wrenches. uh, St. Patty Days. Since it's South by Southwest and St. Patty's Day, everybody would be downtown and not. Very Maybe true. not a lot in Georgetown. So you guys are going. So what I what I understood is that you guys are going to uh, wrench tomorrow. We are talking about going to wrench tomorrow. Talking. <laughs> talking. talking. I feel like we should, since we have a connection with those guys. Yeah. Tell them how I, I don't think we can. Do I told a pod- them how I didn't mention it last time. <laughs> we we can't do a podcast, but well, well not, we not, we not have tomorrow, mentioned them a lot actually. In the we've done two of their two beers. Weeks, yeah. So. Yeah. Although this won't be out for another two weeks, but. That's true. We have mentioned them a lot. Yeah, especially this this week. Yeah. <laughs> Not well, on the podcast. While there. we're doing a different beer. We are right. truly so. wrenching their nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not on the two podcasts where I mean, we drink their beer, just, but this just, one. You know, Celis doesn't give you much to work with in terms of jokes. So, Celis, help us. us sell you. <laughs> hey, Cutter. What's going on, Ross? Do you remember Chia Pets? Chia. I've Yeah, I remember them. It was so much fun, right? Well, it's still fun. <laughs> you know, you soak it, you spread the seeds, and you let your fun grow. It's fun for ages 8 to 80. But enjoy it while you can, because when you turn 81, they come to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> you can enjoy running your fingers through Bob Ross, SpongeBob, Groot 2, or Emojis. Or check out their new Golden Girls line, Trade Barbs with Dorothy, have fun with Blanche, or hear stories about growing up in Sicily with a Sophia Chia. That was a. Did you say Groot two? Groot two. <laughs> oh, Groot two. Got you. Baby Groot. Baby Groot, Groot died. Yeah. So he's Groot two. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, well, he's just Groot, which it would have been less confusing if they'd given him a different name. I don't know. But apparently, a few weeks ago, James Gunn came out and said Groot died in the first one. And the, the the baby Groot is oh I thought he like, said it was the like same. his child or something oh I thought he said it was the same no he said he said Groot's dead he, cl- that was uh. he that was his tweet Groot is dead clearly yeah. his his reproductive cycle is just to clone himself so right. you can call yeah, him his so, kid so I mean, it's, it's basically it's basically still so, him but he doesn't have all his memories he doesn't have any of the memories of the right. previous Groot but it's still it's still gonna be the same got some did, weird powers <laughs> did anybody see the new uh, Infinity War trailer. No. no, I haven't watched it yet. I'm not. Uh, I don't watch trailers. Looks pretty good. Hey, shut your face hole. Hey, is say, anybody excited about the new season of Legion starting? No. Oh yeah, I've not seen the yeah. first. What, you haven't seen the first season? Oh man, it's so good. Come on, man. Except confusing because I have no idea when it takes place. Yes, I mean, I guess it's it's modern, modern day, but they have a lot of like '70s throwback looks or something like so that. So much. Everybody's. Everybody's dressed like late sixties, early seventies. Marvel's fucked, but they have they they're, have their their timelines fucked. Yeah. Well, well but, I don't think it has to do with no, the yeah, timeline. It's, it's not it's in the same timeline. It's just the aesthetic timeline. of the but the show. It's an interesting, but interesting but they literally show. have like oh, yeah. seven congruent timelines. That yeah, are going on I mean, right uh, now it in, depends in on any, who's in any cult, like any 
pop culture reference. Yeah. Well, they're going to start closing those loops because no, I think because supposedly Infinity War, they're going to start part one, part two, start killing some no, of the. It seems one. like Infinity Wait. War would spawn more. Well, that's more what loops. That's what they were saying is that they might end up killing killing people off, yeah. but then just regenerating and oh, uh, rebooting, rebooting yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. you know what I have Re- been watching recently? Is what you mean regrouting? <laughs> regrouting. What I have been watching is Jessica Jones season mm. two. Oh, I seen the first one. Just finished last night. The I first can, season I, or the first I episode? Just finished first the, season. I finished the first episode. Took of me a season long time. Two? No, for of season one. Okay, so here's the thing. I, season one was really eh. You know, it was kind of weak. Season two so far, I'm only three episodes in, but it's been a lot better. Yeah. Were you also three I mean, years in? I'm still not convinced that she should be no, Jessica I, Jones. I don't like, like, I don't like Kristen she, Ritter in pretty much anything. She's yeah, I know. So it's tiny. But it's, it's hard but for me to like, Jones, accept. Yeah, but no. It's really anyway. hard to watch a really attractive girl play an action uh, character. I mean, honestly, so I don't Wait, understand. So how does that relate to this? <laughs> no, no. I don't you're understand. You can't believe her being the character. So the... The right, girl, but then you're saying a really attractive girl. The girl that plays Trish, I feel like she is more the build that should have been Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. I would have found that more acceptable than the girl playing Jessica hey, Jones. Hey, spoiler alert. Kristen I don't know Ritter, who, but a major character from the show dies in the season. I think it's Trish. If I had to guess. Well, no, actually, it can't be Trish, technically. In season two or in season one? Season two. Somebody dies. I don't know who it is, but well, just you know, a major character dies. In Daredevil, think Karen dies. What? Karen dies. S- season two? No. No. She just dies in Daredevil. But in actual, did you see season are you two? What are you talking like, about? The, the Ben Affleck The movie, movie or the no. show or? The comics. The, the comics. comics. Punisher I, kills I, her, right? I know Karen. what you're talking about. His assistant? Oh, I, law, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah she, Karen? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. In the comics, because she actually that was that was a storyline written by yeah. Kevin Smith. I just she she goes off and gets addicted to drugs and then comes back and dies. Oh really? You mean I think uh, yeah, she was a real heroine. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was Bullseye that that killed her. Yeah, no, nah, I'm pretty sure he killed Elektra. What do you use a bomb? That's the movie. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, yeah. That'd be really <laughs> ironic. Like. Like if a guy named Bullseye used bombs to blow people up. Every time <laughs> you don't need. <laughs> you could just be close. Every, 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 time, every time he killed somebody, Bullseye. <laughs> 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 nowhere near. <laughs> hey, he's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> we should when probably... there's explosions, you always hit your target. <laughs> yeah. I like it. But I, I was I was reading that Ben Affleck's fighting in Daredevil was the best he's done in any movie. I don't know. Did you see? Julie? I haven't. I don't. I don't think I had. I don't think <laughs> no. I. I don't think I had a problem with you the fight choreography in, in Daredevil. It was, it was just the movie. The it, it, yeah. Colin Farrell. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. I. I think I only saw it once. So I liked it because I got a surround sound to watch that. Well, not to watch that, but I got it at the same time, and then got the movie, and then there is where he's in the bed, and he can kind of sense everything around him. And my oh, yeah. started going that's off. Cool. Like, that's that's, awesome. that's a cool effect. <laughs> yeah. I keep trying to go watch the director's cut, and I always get interrupted every time I try to watch it. By of Daredevil? Yeah. There's a director's cut? There's a director's cut with like Who, extra did scenes. Did John Favreau direct that? Or? I don't know. Speaking of director's cuts, uh, the first time I ever watched Pacific Rim, Clint's favorite movie over here. Is there a director's cut? Uh, uh, it's not my favorite movie, but it's a good, it's, I, I do enjoy that movie. I enj- it's enjoyable. The it's first like time, the, the first time I've ever element. seen the movie, I we get about a third of the way through. Yeah. I've never seen the movie before, and Clint's watching it with the commentary in the back. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the commentary, what? So the commentary for Tropic Thunder. Is phenomenal. So if you have yeah, the DVD no, or anything like that, well, you know, go watch because, the commentary for Tropic Thunder. Because Kirk Lazarus well, watch it, watch doesn't it. drop character until, until after, after the DVD watch, commentary. You watch the it. movie. Watch the movie first and then go back and watch it with the commentary. I was actually watching it today after work. Tropic right? Thunder? Yeah, before With the, commentary or without? No, with, oh, without. just the movie? Yeah. But there, uh, that was kind of a segue I just into, the movie, so. hey, they're coming up with a sequel. Clint. Oh yeah, they are coming out with a Pacific Rim. John too. Boyega oh, was basically I thought, replacing. I him. thought there was a, a Tropic Thunder too. I was like, no. what? Uh, are you? No, because that would end up like Zoolander too. Like, yeah, that's but... true. You can't bottle that magic. Yeah, no, true. no. 
But uh, but yeah, Pacific Rim is coming out with a, a sequel. Yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah, I'll, I know, I know you sure watch, watch it. it. You know why I'll watch it? Because it starts off with robots fighting robots, oh. and then it switches to robots fighting kaiju again. That's all awesome. And you know what else? Is, Chicks dig giant robots. Oh yeah, as yeah. as well as as a giant well dildos. executed e brake oh. turn champion. <laughs> oh yeah that's a top gear, that. top gear reference that is uh, my second top gear reference uh, actually nice. third be- or maybe fourth because i made the first one a couple times so does guillermo del toro have anything to do with the the sequel i, don't I think, think he- so yeah okay i thought so or maybe he got dropped from it no nah, they went well did know. he direct the first one or did he only uh produce oh, it i think he wrote produce and direct if I'm not mistaken, that I, was I, like, I, I, he that did, was like, he did that was, it, shall we said. say award winning? <laughs> yes. Academy <laughs> award winner. Guillermo del Toro. Uh, it's assumed like with, with <laughs> Academy, <laughs> with Academy award winner, How's you don't a, like for the most of his career, you're like that guy wore <laughs> Academy award. Oh, uh, wait. So wait, what are you saying about Matthew? What are you saying about Academy award winner, Matthew McConaughey? I'm saying that he won an Academy Award, but for most of his career, probably should have. Have you which not he seen didn't. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Dates? I, it's 10 Days. 10 Days. Clearly, he was shunned of his Oscar for that role. Yeah. Angels in the Outfield. Ugh. <laughs> Ross is doing Ross, the angel yeah. motion. Yeah. Well, the you angel can't wave. not. I don't know how these oh, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Ross, what about Ross, Rookie of the Year? Hold on, time out. I don't wait, Matthew, Academy Award winner Matthew McConaughey Ross. was written in Rookie of the Year? No. Oh. What? Was he in? Was Did, Academy Award winner is, Matthew McConaughey is. in? What did we just, Angels in the Outfield? Angels in the I Outfield. Have, I think you're confusing him with Christopher Lloyd. Uh, Christopher Lloyd was. Angels <laughs> in the Outfield. But uh, Tony Danza? Yes, Tony, Tony Danza was alive. Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Well, you have JGL. Of yeah. Course. Adrian Brody. Wait, yeah. but I thought, I thought we were we talking about. We were talking about, about Academy could, Award winner Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, how, was, did we, he, how did we shift gears to these scrubs? He was in a movie with all of these people. He played He played one of the, the one of the outfielders. I know that much. Like a very minor role. It was somewhat major because he was on the team. No. He was closest to the Angels. Yeah. In no. the outfield. He played a character named Ben Williams. Yeah, he had a name. It wasn't like outfield. Who? One. Who did he like? Ben Williams. Williams. <laughs> Show me the photo. I can picture Joseph Lord and Govett. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Lord and Govett. <laughs> Gordon Lovett. I can picture uh, Danny Glover. I can picture uh, Tony Daniels. Nope, it's Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Daniels went down to Georgia. <laughs> sorry, sorry. He was looking sorry. for a stolen steel. Oh my gosh. Uh, Short on time. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm 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 off this because I'm go. so fucking up these names. So much wheat. So much wheat. This, this is, is wheat. Re- There's too much wheat. I mean, we all know what I'm gonna say here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's a, a one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's a one. I was about so, to like, say uh, it's a one. Delicious. Nutritious. Tastes just like chicken. Uh, no, it does not taste like chicken. Cutter. Sell us white. It does not taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> would you I think there's there's tagline. Tagline. Yeah. There you go. Would you hit on it when there's daylight or would you wait till two in oh. the morning when everyone's outside the bar and you haven't really got oh, lucky? You, Cutter's yeah. answer <laughs> Cutter's answer to that is both. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. If there's chicken involved. <laughs> <laughs> if there's chicken involved, yes. What were we saying? If there was chicken. Uh, Give me no, some of that, that rotisserie. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> Get on this spit. <laughs> <laughs> Rotate uh, over this fire. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't oh. even know what that means. <laughs> oh. Oh, all good. All the word good. rotisserie sounds pretty funny. Yeah. Anyway, Cutter, what did you think of this beer? Well, that was good. So insightful. As, so insightful as always, Cutter. The orange peel, the coriander, like it's just don't it, act it, like you can taste the coriander. Nobody can taste the coriander. I'm sorry. The orange peel, the raisins, the other taste. The yeah, cl- I was gonna say the orange <laughs> peel, the cilantro, the cloven bananas. You taste it all, don't you? Devil's fruit. That's what coriander stands for, is clove of bananas, right? I actually, to be 100% honest, I got a lot of the nature's fruit on this one. 
No, you didn't. You're right, I didn't. <laughs> but I did get a lot of orange peel and coriander. It's like it was fantastic. Yeah, was you did You didn't get any coriander. It was smooth, literally until the last drop. So for me, I still. It's a good one. talk, Clint. How do you feel, <laughs> Russ? Hey, you know what, Cutter? I do that to you. You don't do that <laughs> shit to me. Hey, Clint, is it an episode one? No, it is not an. Ep- it's like an, it's like no. Let me tell you what episode it, it is. A, thinks it, no. it's, a, <laughs> it's an episode four. It's not an episode oh. five, but it's an episode four. Okay. Ross knows what I'm talking about. No, I, yeah. no, I got. I, Joel, I get the Joel, reference. you were just joking around. Cutter gets references. <laughs> I Apparently, get the, I Cutter get gets all the references. That is like the fourth reference I've got tonight, guys. I have yeah. a new record. Champion. 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 So, yes, this is a one. There's Richard Hammond. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it. Next time I'm at a bar and I see this available, I will probably buy it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. As I said when we did Big Bark, I think Big Bark is still my favorite so far. Yeah. But this would be second. Okay. Oh, hold on. What about the... Okay. I need to drink the Hefeweizen again from Wrench. Ross, how do you so, feel about the beer? Yeah, I like the Celis White. I can definitely see how it would be their flagship, how it's won so many awards. It's a really great beer, really solid, really smooth. It still suffers from the wheat beer overload. It's not as strong as the Wrench Weizenbach. It's where you drink so much... Of wheat beer, and then it just kind of dulls your taste buds. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to get that right now with the wrench. I probably got it on the second beer, but so this one is obviously a lot smoother. It's got a little bit more crisp taste to it. It's definitely one. Did you did you pick up on the orange peel even with the? I if I if, if I had not read orange peel, I just would have thought it was a beer just. Beer flavor. I don't that's know. that's interesting. I I'm not sure if I hadn't read the orange peel, I would have been able to pick up on it. But as I drank it, I definitely felt like I picked up on the I mean, orange peel. Yeah, there's something. There's, if you say orange peel, and then I drink it, like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, of you course, can orange hit, peel. I just I was curious. I wanted to follow up on that because mm-hmm. I still definitely feel like I could taste the orange peel elements of it yeah but i still can't pick up the coriander and i feel like cutter's a goddamn liar for saying he can in general uh, because he says he can pick up every flavor note that every beer says on the can (laughs) but uh yeah it's you know belgian i'm typically a fan of belgians they're right up satan's alley satan's alley i don't know why i keep referencing it but because you think it's because it's funny yeah Yeah. joel you guys though Okay, whatever. I like Satan's but, Alley. Yeah. <laughs> you like Satan's Alley. <laughs> no, Joel. It has, it has Toby Maguire in it. MTV Movie Award Best Kiss Winner, Toby Maguire. Duh. <laughs> Toby, Toby Maguire and, and Kirk Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Joel, what do you think of the beer? Hey, Celis, you got a really awesome looking can. That's what I think about the beer. It is a pretty cool can. Mm-hmm. It the actual beer, Joel. Harkens back. <laughs> do, you not, to... do you not dig it? No, once again, this is probably. You know what? You know what we need to do? We need to open this can. I open the label. It's it's got one of those. Yeah, it's got oh, it's a wrap. One of those wrap labels. Can. We need to check to see if there's a it's tattoo a fortune. on the can. Yeah, uh, I will say it's wrapped a lot better. It than, is wrapped uh, a lot better than the wrench. The yeah. was it the wrench or yeah. was it, it was the wrench? It no, was it's the wrench. The wrench. Uh, okay, I thought it was the Fresh Coast from Friends. And no, I. I don't think Fresh Coast was wrapped. No, it's not. But no, no harm, no foul. Wrench. I don't give a damn. You keep doing what you're doing. I, I don't yeah. give a Van Damme. <laughs> wrench. <laughs> wrench, you just keep on not wrenching our nuts. You don't want them to wrench your nuts? No. <laughs> Why would you want anybody to wrench your nuts? Well, some people pay a lot of money to have. <laughs> not the people so, at this. Some people have pay a lot of money <laughs> to lick someone's asshole. <laughs> but, <laughs> Hot ni- like hot right nickels. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna bang it when I get home. <laughs> we referenced it so much last week. Idiot. Um But yeah, Joel, you were you were saying yeah, you weren't say- a fan? I think I really you intricate, like the can. awesome can. The beer, I could take it or leave it. I'll say this. I think it's what beer should taste like, in my opinion. Um <laughs> Time out. I don't but, like it. I don't this like is what it. every beer should taste like. <laughs> but you're, so you're, I really yeah. should not like beer. <laughs> what you're saying is this this is just like a plain standard ordinary beer. Yeah, if I took like a Coors Light and had orange to it, I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Anyway, 
Uh, nope. Cutter got the label off of uh, the the wrap off of the can, and it yeah. says "fuck you, Cutter" on it. So that's <laughs> hey, Celis, you're doing. I want to buy more things. of these beers now. <laughs> Just as an update, uh, it's been two weeks since uh, we've given the shout out for me to get a "fuck you" in public. I've not gotten one. Yeah, I know. Oh, I was I was on. hoping today that I will literally we, we need... buy. I will buy somebody a beer, like the closest beer that I can <laughs> I can find. Ooh, I will, get it in the I, singles aisle. Yeah. <laughs> I will, in the I, will aisle. I will find one and I Where will give it to Where are the kegs? Yeah. If I'm in a bar district, I will buy you a beer. We probably, you we a probably just need to. Uh, people, you are in Austin. Find Cutter. We, I have started throwing stickers out and around. So okay. uh, it's like there Also, he'll give you a sticker. If I people, will give you a sticker. If people, you don't have to pay a dollar. No. If people can, find, find Cutter. Just try it, to make his day worse. We need to max. <laughs> That's all we're asking. Please, that's all I really need in my life. Wait, my we life need to, we need to maximize our user base so that more people have the opportunity to tell Cutter, <laughs> fuck you. All right, Joel, what do you think of this beer? <laughs> yeah, you, so, you, so you're not a fan. It would, would it a be fan. a zero? He's a fan or? of the can, not a f- fan of the contents. Because I'm Mr. Contradictory. <laughs> I wasn't too impressed. It, it tastes like a generic beer with mm-hmm. like a twist of orange. But... Even from the first sip, I was like, I kind of like this. So I'd still give it a one. Okay. But it, it, out of the, what, seven or eight beers? But you'd pick something else. Two yeah. episodes so, Two yeah, episodes yeah, yeah. from now, he's going to be like, no, I didn't like that beer. <laughs> so, yeah. so if it were on a menu, there was only two beers, this. What's the other beer? And Blue Moon. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> what would you choose? This. Though? Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> hard, 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 to, yeah. Here's, hard to decide. Yeah. Here's, here's here's what we're talking about. So, Blue Moon, uh, I would actually pick this. Hey, Cutter, <laughs> what's going on, Ross? Have you heard of Game Over Video Games? I haven't. Well, Game Over Video Games is an independent chain of amazing retro focused video game stores dedicated to the love of classic video games, systems, and accessories from Atari to Xbox. At Game Over, they buy, sell, and trade all used video games. And in the process, they give gamers a top quality, one-stop shop for all their classic gaming needs. Modern console games, consoles, accessories, plus they host awesome store events, tournaments, and the coolest in video game themed collectibles, t-shirts, plushies, soundtracks, and more. Plushies? Yes. Not furries. Oh. So calm down. They buy and sell online nationwide from their warehouse in Texas, and they ship to customers anywhere across the entire USA and Canada. Canada of America. The Canada of the world. At Game of Video Games, you can find such classic games as Double Crab Rangoon 2, Donkey Kong Coitus, Pink Eye 007, Betty White vs. Predator, Super Smash Everyone Loves Raymond, Transformers Revenge of the Sith, Star <laughs> Michael J. Fox, and DuckTales. Is Game Over still operating? Yeah. Yeah, they have four stores in Texas. All right. So thanks for listening, listener. Hey, before we go, we've got a couple mentions. Oh, do we? Yeah, there's Whiskey Girl. She actually bought a shirt on our website. Oh, Hoorah. Nice. thank you. Also, one of our Instagram followers, Books, Beer, and Boots. Uh, it was her birthday. Uh, so, happy birthday, Books, happy birthday, Beer, books, and Boots. Books, Beers, and Boots. I wonder how she celebrated. Did she read a drinking. book? Drinking. Probably drinking she, some beer. She drank and... Celis White. Yeah. Not, uh, as she listened to this episode. No. Uh, maybe she drank... Uh, Collective oh, Brewing. Big Bark. Good on you, maybe. Books, yeah. Boots, and Beer. Good on you. Anybody else we got a shout out to? We are now part of the Hopped Up Network, so go ahead and check them out. They have a lot of good they have a lot of good craft beer related podcasts. By the looks of it, it they have a lot of city specific podcasts. Yes. Did they have anybody in Portland? I don't believe so. Oh what? good, because fuck those people. What about Kansas? No, I don't no, think I don't so. think anybody lives in Kansas. Yeah, <laughs> nobody really lives there. Except for farmers, and they don't even have the internet. They got farmers only. So, thanks for listening, listener. Mustang Sally. Uh, (laughs) Our one listener. Our one listener. Thanks for being here with us and enjoying Celis White 
from Cellus Brewery. We hoped you enjoyed your time with us as much as we enjoyed our time together. And check out our new website, threebeersinthepodcast.com. Give me a shout out in public. I hope you enjoyed listening to us as much as we enjoyed not listening to Cutter. This is the podcast. <laughs> this is the podcast. This is the podcast. This is the podcast. This is the podcast. Is this the podcast? Right, guys. And now we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. If you liked what you heard, leave us a review. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, Google Play, and TuneIn. You can find us on our Facebook or Twitter at 3, the number 3, Beers in Podcast. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. And if you didn't like us, why the hell are you still here? You should have turned this off long ago. Maybe you're just going to listen to us anyway. You should probably subscribe, too. And if you would like a transcript of our podcast, write down everything that we just said. Man, I'm going to bing it when I get home.